Green flag, green flag, green flag. We are back hot at Formula Drift Global Time Attack here at Palm Beach International Raceway. This is GTA Session 3 right now. I'm John Nadzadari, and I'm here with Yukio Tyro. Hey, how you guys doing? We're uh, pairing each other back up. It's been a while since we've been together. Yes, it has. Yes, it has, show. Yukes. Right now, we're out here at Session 3 of the Global Time Attack right now. We're starting 10 minutes early because the rain delay threw everybody off. Obviously, these cars... Even in the street class, the Hankook RS3s, they are not designed to be wet weather tires, not designed to go around the track when it's wet, not safe for the drivers, not an opportunity for time attack records, which is what we are shooting for today. And we do have some of those records already. Jeff Westfall with a 118.900 fastest time overall time attack track record, as well as Chris Rado with a 121.119 second fastest time of the session unlimited front wheel drive record as well. We're showing you the backstretch. We have live timing and scoring going up. If you're here in the paddock, make your way to one of the pit walls and you could see these guys, the world's fastest time attack cars, or you could go to where FD has been broadcasting. You could see us on the Jumbotron right now. They're coming around right now. This is down the back stretch right here. This is Hartman Fail in the Rentec C63. This is a 605 horsepower C63 AMG. And probably the most expensive Kelly Blue Book Time attack car we've had, probably, I, I right? I think so, yeah. I think so, yes. He so it's a baller, baller time attack. Chris right Rado is running a $26,000 Scion TC <laughs> here that goes 1 minute 21 seconds. We're talking about off the lot prices here, I think. Hartman you know? Fail with the American flag next to him, actually German born, but living here in Florida right now. And it sounds amazing, by the way. If it you guys are out the, here, it just sounds amazing when it's going down this straight. Some European hardware here is we're going to show. I don't. Don't know what we're showing. There we go. That's that's actually Witt Staples in the BMW M3, that Rentec M3. And he's not usually driving an M3. No, that's his personal car on those 19-inch Advan RSs. He has the Fortune Auto Evo 9 in the unlimited all-wheel drive class that we're so familiar to him seeing drive. So you're telling me he gets to drive an Evo and an M3? Yes, he does. <laughs> we're in the wrong business, Ukes. Oh, uh, definitely. Now we're showing the live stream times here. Showing here, this is the fast back straight here on this 2.034 mile course. Uh, our timing and scoring, one of our timing and scoring directors, Henry, telling us that he runs a Daytona prototype here, a DP car, runs into the, I thought DP meant something else, but he's telling me it means Daytona prototype. He's run as fast as 114 here. He normally averages between a 115 and a 116. We're going to see if Jeff Westfall and Chris Rado can give him a run for his money. Hartman fail in that AMG C63, the Rentec car, coming down that back stretch. What's going on there, Yukes? No, I'm just talking about how Jeff Westfall is so close to that time now with the 119. Am I, 118, 118, 118, 900 118, right. from Je for Jeff Westfall and and that GST Impreza. And uh, when you talk about, you know, we're talking about values of the car. That car is probably the lowest value too. I think it's only about two grand. <laughs> Kelly Blue Book, yeah, 96 like Impreza that. L. Mike Warfield doing so much more with less. We yeah. just saw a feature on that car on Speedhunters.com. Wonderful feature shot by Larry Chen, the and, world famous uh, Larry Chen. Yes, world famous <laughs> Larry Chen. <laughs> Hartman fail with the fastest lap of 136.202, not as fast as his 137.65 that he ran earlier. And we can see um, you know, a lot of these cars, though, they're all street-based cars. They're not tube chassis or anything like that. No monocoque, no tube chassis, and I'm getting dizzy there watching that shot there. Producer Lewis, now we're showing Producer Nolan down the back straight. Yeah, most of these cars are there. They have to be production-based. You cannot modify the floor pan or the firewall on the cars. No tube chassis, no monocoque cars. We were going to allow Henry to run, but he said we had to buy him a sushi boat if we wanted to bring him out and let his Daytona prototype run. So Henry from Timing Scoring was going to bring out that Daytona, that Riley, that Riley car, that Daytona prototype, running as fast as a 114. Very expensive to run that car here. We were hoping to see some exhibition passes from him, but unfortunately did not bring it out this weekend. Henry telling us he only likes to run that car on really dry conditions because it runs as fast as 185 miles an hour down the back straight. That is very, very fast, Ukes. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of these, you know, uh, the street-based uh, time attack cars can hit that. I think they're getting about, what, what, 150 back here? Or? No, I would venture to guess that Chris Rado is close to that time where Henry's car makes up for it is in the corners. Right. There's, obviously, with the monocoque chassis, it's producing so much more downforce. He, his average speed is much higher. But his top speed, it's a restricted, regulated engine where Chris Rado can put as much as that little 2-liter uh, can handle. I'm sorry, 2.5-liter. Right. And you're right now watching Witt Staples in that M3, his daily driver, I'm assuming. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> Running a 132.863. He had a crazy block off plate on the uh, air box saying he's trying to create more positive pressure. He had a uh, Turner, uh, Turner uh, tuning uh, set up on that car from Turner Motorsports, and he said the uh, Rentec kit just blew it away. The Rentec tune made so much more horsepower. He's putting close to 360 horsepower to the wheels in that car. Seeing some of the Formula Drift configuration, they actually go the other way through that direction. So, so essentially, we're going both ways here at Palm Beach International Raceway today, which is the way I like to swing, right, Ashley? Ashley Baker shaking her head at me right now, saying you She's are... actually nodding her head, which yes, is kind of scary. I know, that kinda, I kind of like that, actually. What we're seeing down here in the paddock is actually Matt Powers bringing his car out. Matt Powers and the team Need for Speed uh, Nissan 240SX. Yeah, practice is going to begin in about an hour for them. Practice for uh, Formula Drift will be starting at 2 p.m. But right now we're seeing global time attack going around. This is session three. We're showing four sessions before 2 p.m. right now. Hartman Fail coming down the long back stretch in that AMG C63, tuned by his own concern, Rentec. Hartman Fail putting in time at AMG, and for the last 21 years, he's been running Rentec here in Florida. And it's interesting because I was talking to him about uh, the turbocharging, you know, the future of turbocharging. It seems like all the AMGs are going to turbocharging. He's excited about it, and, uh, you know, me being a part of, you know, Garrett Turbocharger, he's, he's excited to kind of get more into te turbo technologies and and things like that. And he said he actually has a V12 twin turbo that he just got tuned. So he's excited to get that thing out there too. The, guys, the guy knows what he's doing. 133, 984 for him. He definitely knows what he's doing. Not as fast as his fastest time. 137, 56 is his fastest time. So we're showing Witt Staples. Witt Staples' fastest time uh, today, 134,092. We're showing live timing and scoring on the top of your screen. And if you're here at Formula Drift, here at the paddock at Palm Beach International Raceway, you could come watch it on the Jumbotron over by the Formula Drift judging tower, which you're seeing Witt Staples go through. I think the judges gave him a good score for that because those Advan RSs look pretty good on the car. I don't know. Is there a style score for that, Ukes? I don't know if he's hella flush, though. <laughs> Dave Norton, speaking of hella flush, in the spec clutch Nissan <laughs> 240SX, his car was hella flush. It was understeering. He had a push condition. He removed the spacers in the rear. I told him the hella flush kids would not approve of that, Ukes. No, I think it was running like a 215 on a 10-inch wide tire, <laughs> yes. so a 10-inch wide wheel. So he's got the poke and stretch going on. We're showing the drag strip at This was the world famous Moroso Motorsports Park drag strip before it was Palm Beach International Raceway. Still running drag, drag cars here. I see the Titan guys still bringing out their Supers here every now and again. We're seeing a very fast car and Hartman Fails, uh, Rentec C63 coming down the front straight. And it seems like he's just putting lap after lap after lap out there. It's like he's having a blast. He can go all day in that car, which a lot of our top time attack cars could go. A lot of people criticize the cars, but they run times as fast as some of the ALMS prototypes and some of the ALMS GT cars, some of the Speed Challenge cars, some of the Grand Am cars, but they can only run those laps for one lap. Fuel cell's not designed to go for more. Aero blocks off a lot of the cooling. The tires are not designed to go for anything more than two laps. These cars are tuned to the ragged edge. Hartman Fail improving on his time in this session with a 133, 935. Still not as good as the 137, 56 that he set in an earlier session. As we see Witt Staples coming off track in his E90 M3. Beautiful, beautiful car. If you make your way over to the south side of the paddock, I'm sure Witt, Witt would let you sit in it. He did not make it out yesterday. He was registered, but he was on daddy daycare. I know all too much about that. I tend to throw some baby food at my kids and hope that they're okay on their own, but the ex-wife yeah, insists them, that I watch them. We'll put them in front of a TV, SpongeBob. Pretty you know, much, usually, yes. Usually that's, the, that's the extent of my children's development. They'll get SpongeBob SquarePants. Maybe I'll throw in a little, uh, you know, Baby Einstein or something. <laughs> that's a beautiful Doug shot, from Timing the and Scoring telling us that there's a uh, car on track. Oh, a new car coming out. This FRS. is actually John Miller in the Arsenal Auto Sports Scion FRS, the world's first time attack FRS. John Miller running into the 139s yesterday, I believe. And it's pretty much a dealer. Like from the, I think the only thing he's got wheels, right? Like, I think he got the new car prep from the dealership, and that's basically what he did for the event. Voiding has, the warranty. <laughs> <laughs> he's got 17-inch uh, NKRPF1s on there, uh, brake pads, and it was actually set up by Nero and crew over at Titan Motorsports. So I asked him if they just threw a 2JZ swap in there while they were working on it, and he said, no, not yet, but those guys are actually working on developing a wealth of parts for um, the Scion FRS and other cars. I also heard that Chris Harrington, noted photographer, hooked them up with the Scion team, and they might get some Ken Gushi scrubs, so maybe some uh, Hancock RS3s on the front of that car in a later session. Yeah, they work together, I guess. There's, it's like a fraternity of Scion owners. Yes, it is. <laughs> uns, 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 Scion owners unite. 
All the guys with the XBs, with the Lambo doors, please park near the alligator pits. <laughs> with the bazooka tubes. Yes, yes. That's Hartman Fail there coming around. That's the, you're seeing the Formula Drift configuration. They actually go the other way through that configuration. No, we're not showing them, but I think I saw Dan O'Donnell in the Professional Awesome Evo 7 go out there. He is out on track right Somewhere. now. Somewhere. They're looking for We're looking for him. <laughs> His fastest time today, a 126.423. He ran as fast as a 125.9 yesterday. John Miller in that Arsenal Autosport FRS. He can run lap after lap. His car's not necessarily tuned to the ragged edge. John telling me yesterday that he wants to eventually build that car into a Grand Am ST class competitor. That'd be very exciting to see. I also heard something, and I'm not supposed to say it, but what the heck, I've been on too much cough medicine this morning. So I think that there's potential for a some sort of a Scion series. I don't know exactly what it is, and I'm not supposed to say it, but you could be hearing some good stuff from Scion in the future. So you mean I could take my Scion XB and go wheel to wheel racing with somebody? Potentially, or another model, Ukes, but I'm not allowed to say. Oh, there, there's Dan O'Donnell right there. Dan O'Donnell. He's not just awesome. He is professionally awesome, but it does look like he is going to continue around the track. It's hard to tell if they're going to pull off or not. That's what I always say. It's hard to tell if I'm going to pull out or not, but, um, you know, it's hard to tell if these guys are going to pull off the track or not. But anyways, that's another story for another time. Hartmut fail there coming down the long, yeah, long back stretch Looks like he's cooling down. Looks like he's cooling down. He's going to be pulling Oh, there he goes. He's got this turn the signal. How, who puts a turn signal on a time polite. attack car? He's, oh, no, he's waving to people? Oh, no, no, he's telling everybody he's going off track. 133, right. his best time. Not as good as his 130 yesterday. Hartmut fail on the Rentex C63 pulling off track right now. We have the timing and scoring up. Thank you very much. The guys from Bell One Racing Communications and the people here at Palm Beach International Raceway as well as Ubiquity Broadcast Corporation and Influxes for getting this live stream up, getting our live timing and scoring up. We're incredibly honored to be a part of it. Daniel O'Donnell, fastest lap, 153.239. Wait, that's not good. I should not say it with so much emphasis. That's actually a terrible time. I think that might be a cool down. Ukes, why did you tell me to be excited about that? I tell you to get excited all the time. In fact, I think you're excited right now. You don't have to tell me to get excited, Ukes. This is, I have no this FCC is, around, so it's okay. You know, this is, this is a big problem. Everybody in the paddock is booing us now. I think we're reaching an angry mob here. Unfortunately, the people on the live stream, they can't boo us. And I'm seeing uh, some parents covering their kids' ears right now, John. <laughs> yes, potentially, potentially. As we see, this looks like Daniel O'Donnell here in the Professional Awesome Evo 7. These guys, Grant Davis and Michael Lewin, working very, very hard on that car. They ran it at Road Atlanta, no problems whatsoever, on their way to yet another street all-wheel drive track record. They've already scooped up the track records here. We're not going to lie. Not too many time attack uh, groups have been out here. So pretty much every time that we're running is a time attack track record today. You know, and that team, they, they do everything almost themselves. They, you know, they, they have a lot of stickers and stuff. They get a lot of help. But still, it's, it's a privateer team. They spend a lot of their own money. They have that cool-looking van. And, well, go ahead. You want to tell the lap time? Yeah, fastest time today, 126, 926. Still not as fast as a 125, 9. But I know they're going to find more time in that car. Those guys are very good. I've seen them run on other teams' scrubs. They make their own parts. They're from West Lafayette, uh, Indiana. And uh, Hoosiers, yeah, they, they know how to do it. Not Hoosier tires, but Hoosier, the, <laughs> Hoosier the, the indigenous state citizen. Showing right now, this is my boy. My Persian brother from another mother, Ramin Abdelwahabi, in the pros tuning Evo 8. I'm not going to be able to say his last name. I'm so excited that there's a Persian in Time Attack other than the loud mouth behind the mic. This now, that car it doesn't look very lightweight, though. I mean, no, it, you are a good, very astute observation there, Yukes. That is actually a road race car. That is not designed for time attack. It is more of a wheel to wheel car. Ramin telling us it weighs some 3,000 pounds. 133, 665. He's about six seconds off pace from yesterday. He ran a 127. Very, very fast for that car. He says in optimal conditions, he has another three, three seconds in that car. I'm a little worried, though, with Ramin here and myself, with two Persians here in Palm Beach, with somebody could claim a terror cell. I'm just here to say we want to be everyone's friends. We just want to be happy. Go, go, America. That's all I'm saying right now. Daniel O'Donnell's fastest lap, 126, 821. Still not as fast as his 125, 9 that he ran yesterday. What's going on there, Yukes? Oh, I think he took his time to get to the track this morning. Apparently he had a Belgian waffles, and he didn't show up to the driver's meeting, so I think it's a, he's a little off because of that. Yes, he is. Daniel O'Donnell posting on his Facebook that his most exciting moment here was going swimming in the ocean with his mom. He went swimming <laughs> in the Atlantic with his mom. And yeah. I'm like, really, Daniel? You didn't get excited about the global time? I guess this is just old hat for him, setting track records over and over and over again. The funny thing is, when I talk to him about breaking records, he's just pretty nonchalant about it. 
He is a lot of other drivers. I heard a lot of other pro drivers. Jeff Westfall saying he is a very, very competent shoe. Not a pro driver, but still very, very fast. We're showing Ramin Alba Bahavi and the pros tuning Evo 8. He's running a Hoosier, R, uh, a Hoosier R6 slick, I believe, on that car. And when you look at that car, it's, it's, it's really well made. It's, it's almost show quality. It is. That is a, uh, boy, I want to say it's an APR wide it body is. kit on that car. It is. No body kit on this car. Uh, we're showing Daniel O'Donnell's time, but that is actually John Miller in the Arsenal Autosport Scion FRS Street Rear Wheel Drive, currently in third place in Street Rear Wheel Drive. It looks like a sh like a midget version of like a like a Aston Martin. Like <laughs> for a second, it does. <laughs> it does. It's got a Hyundai Genesis thing to it, yeah, Aston it Martin does. thing going on. Looks like one of those. Uh, the, uh, no no offense to the to the the Chinese Americans here in the audience, but looks like one of those little Chinese cars that they sort of <laughs> looks like another car, but not quite. Like Geely makes that car that looks like a Range yeah, Rover, but it's not yeah. quite a Range Rover. It's a Lange Lova, I guess they would call it. Lange Lova. So we also have, uh, we're seeing that Arsenal Autosport car out there. I said he was in third place, but I believe now he's in fourth place. I believe Whit Staples bumped him off of the podium right now. So John's going to have to do some work in that stock he's got, FRS. Yeah, he's got about uh, about three times the horn <laughs> yes. power he's as gonna the have FRS. To, he's going to have to get Nero and the boys from Titan out here to drop, drop that 2JZ uh, transplant in. Now, would that be legal to the rules? No, you're right, Ukes. Thank you for calling me out on my own rules. No engine swaps in um, in street classes, unless it's a, a, for an existing car. If you drive a Lancer, you could put an Evo engine in, something like that. But I don't who think who would do that. I know. I don't know who would do that too. The Ford G63. This is uh, Ramin Abdulhavi in the Pros Tuning Evo 8, running as fast as a 127 yesterday. I believe he was running a 133. And I have a breaking news report. It looks like Ashley Baker is going to be changing her shirt, so I'm not going to say anything for a few if minutes. If you guys want to come up here and watch, watch it, you guys can like do that. like a slack-jawed local looking at Ashley Baker. The lovely Ashley Baker from Baker Media Communications. Oh, oh wow. Now and she's, then, John, now you have she's to wear it. HRE giving away women's T-shirts today, but right now, Abdul Bahavi, fastest lap, 129, 346, fastest lap of the day. Still not as fast as lap overall the weekend with his 127 and change that he ran yesterday. Doug, our timing and scoring director, shaking his head when I say 127 and change. I'm sure it's a more accurate time from yesterday. Uh, Doug, our timing and scoring director, telling me that Ramin Abdelbahavi just got his racing license two months ago. He was a, a time trial guy, which is m what the license requirements that we require. Uh, director Henry saying, where did he buy it from? Is that a dig on Persians there, Henry? <laughs> But I'm both. Leave the jokes to me, Henry. <laughs> Here's we see Daniel O'Donnell getting all sorts of hot in there and one one twenty six eight two one. Not as fast as the one twenty five nine. He's just getting close yesterday. to one twenty five that he had before. He's so it's I chipping away. I don't know. Maybe if it's just that trip to the beach or the Belgian waffle that <laughs> causes it. He's too mellow. He's got to get back into fighter stance. I wonder if the heat is affecting these cars. I wonder if the humidity and the ambient temperature is affecting the actual track temp, too. It is a little, it is a little hotter than it was uh, yesterday. Yesterday it was overcast or cloudy the whole time. We did have a damp track. We did have a green track. I don't know how much rubber they're going to be able to lay down on the track as the track rubbers in, so to speak, and Ashley Baker would tell me that's what she said. And they're going through that Formula D part where there's plenty of rubber yeah, right there. They don't have problem laying down all sorts of rubber. I saw Ryan Sage yesterday from Formula Drift. He's wearing a uh, bandana over his mouth. And I said, I guess that's a good thing. He said, I'm just waiting for the class action suit 50 years from now. <laughs> We're looking like we have about 10 more minutes left in this session, and then we're going to have session four. We're going to have a short break and show you session four. Right now, we're showing you John Miller in the Arsenal Autosport Scion FRS, world's first Scion time attack car. Ooh, and there he goes. Daniel O'Donnell getting all sorts of loose. you got to get the car to rotate around that turn 10, turn 11 to get set up for turn 11 to get the speed down this front straight. As we see Daniel O'Donnell carrying the speed, he is chasing away at that 125.9. I don't know if he's going to be able to improve. Heavy braking into one there. And he's probably the only Evo 7 in Time Attack in North America, correct? I, I'm is thinking. that an Evo 7? It's an Evo 7, yeah. It's an Evo something. I don't know if it's a, a <laughs> Mackinac edition or an IX or a 10 or whatever they call them. I thought there was a Vin Diesel triple X edition, but I guess that's just one of the... Uh, is that the Evo 30? <laughs> the triple X edition. Or that could be a movie that I got in my hotel room last night. Please, I'm expensing that back because that was research. That was research. This is Ramin Abu Bahavi coming around in the Pro's Tuning Evo 8. Ramin carrying a lot of speed. 
down that front straight, seeing if he can improve 127 very fast. He says there's another three seconds in that car. 124, 121, 64 wow. from Amin Abu Bahadi. Where did he get he the five seconds? The, he shortcutted <laughs> the course. Something had to happen. Us Persians are shady characters. I'm not going <laughs> to deny it. Can we check Ramin's time and make sure that is correct? Very fast. Oh, now we're seeing a 128, 785, I believe. Oh, okay. I'm not That's... sure if that was a 121 or not. We're going to confirm that time. Doug telling us that was a 128 is the time that we're seeing. Producer Daryl getting me all excited. I thought a Persian just dominated time attack. Take that, America. Here comes Iran. Oh, you know, I don't think you really want to yell that out loud. I know, maybe not. I'm flying later tonight. I do not want Homeland Security. I do not want the full cavity search from the TSA. All right, looks like Daniel Donald's going down on his cool down also. So he, Hard to tell right now from yeah. this angle. Here we're showing producer Nolan giving us a great shot of Daniel Donald behind the fence down that back straight. Apologies, we could not get the cameras over there. We wanted to stand on the track. Somebody of the people at NASA said that might not be the safest oh, thing. Hands up, hands out, so he's coming in. Or he could be signifying black power. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Here we see Ramin Abu Vahabi going down the back, back straight. Daniel O'Donnell, fastest lap, 126, 621, I believe, or 821, not entirely sure. Um, that is, does not improve on his time yesterday. Only car in street, all wheel drive. What we're looking at right now is Ramin Abu Vahabi in the pros tuning Evo 8. Ramin carrying the speed down that front straight. Very mildly modified 4G63. Serious roll cage set up for wheel-to-wheel -wheel duty. With a Garrett GT35. Garrett GT35. Yuki Otaira pulling double duty here. But we're trying to get him to be Switzerland here because we have support from Descendant Racing, Synergy Turbo, as well as Garrett Turbo. Oh, Turbo we're all friendly Garrett. with each other. You guys take a, bit of, a little bit of a different tack from... Uh, Synergy, they do a little bit of a different setup, more for a street class based Absolutely. cars. And you guys are doing those screamers like we see on Daigo Saito's car. That car looks like it will suck in some of the alligators here, huh? Yeah, no, we do a lot of the custom uh, high horsepower applications. So uh, we have a total of uh, 12 Formula Drift drivers out here representing us. And then we have uh, three uh, Global Time Attack drivers representing us here this weekend. So, you know, it, it's a good representation. We really uh, support any other you know, manufacturer of turbochargers. We really like to see more turbochargers out there, whether it's ours or our competitors. It's, you know, it helps out. And globally, turbocharging has become more popular. So you'll start seeing more and more factory cars with turbochargers. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, Hartman Fail, was, you were speaking to him about that. Um, the definite, the Mercedes, the BMWs, the Audis, they used to go for high displacement engines. Yep. Then they went to add the supercharger. Now they're going to smaller displacement with a twin turbocharger. Yeah, they, you could cheat the, 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 the mileage that way a little bit. Which but is crazy. You can get the emissions. It right. gets a little bit better of emissions, which is ironic, too, because all the Japanese manufacturers in the 80s were producing cars that had large turbos, 80s and early 90s, and they couldn't qualify for emissions, and they had to remove the turbochargers from their cars. Well, and the turbocharger technology has changed so much that uh, even even with us, we're we're, we're constantly uh, you know making new applications. We do provide a lot of turbochargers for the OEM manufacturers, so we're not just about you know high horsepower, but we're all about uh, green power. Yes, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> Wade Wheezy Conway watching the live stream sent me a very incriminating picture of myself saying me I'm not allowed to diss his XB anymore. So <laughs> big ups to Wade Wheezy Conway, uh, World Racing's number one fan. Could not make it out. You're sorely missed, uh, Wheezy. But big ups to you. So now it looks like we're winding down on this session, and we are going to uh, follow with our next session. I believe that session is going to go from 140 until... Um, that one's going to go from 1.40 until uh, 2 p.m., and then we're going to go immediately into the Formula Drift uh, practice. And we have a lot of people walking through the paddock right now, so make sure you guys uh, swing on out to the other side uh, with the Global Time Attack group as you guys can check out some of the uh, Global Time Attack cars, the race cars that are on the track, and also some of the Pro-Am guys there. There's some Pro-Am uh, Drift guys in that back area of the paddock, too. So yeah, let's show those Show, show some love. Guys. Yeah, show those Pro-Am guys some love because uh, they're doing it hard. They're the next uh, Von Gittin Jr.'s Daigo Saito's of the world. <laughs> you got to follow your dreams, guys. <laughs> Wade Wheezy Conway telling me that FF, I'm not sure what that means, but it's uh, apparently uh, it's the old name of our front-wheel drive class, front-engine, front-wheel drive, or it could be code for something else. Showing John Arsenal, I, I'm sorry, John Arsenal, John Miller in the Arsenal Auto Sport uh, Scion FRS as well and we have uh, him coming down the front straight. We saw that fast time of this session 
That was uh, uh, Miller's fastest time, 137.328, improving on his 139 from yesterday. So John Miller finding some speed there. And we're also seeing uh, Ramin Abdelbahavi going 128.665, very, very fast time. So could he technically have the fastest stock like dealership record kind of thing? Or? He's got the fastest <laughs> everything because he's the only oh, Cyan FRS in time attack right now. So Ken Gushi getting shown up in his own game. I know Ken Gushi wanting to come out here. Uh, there's rumors that he could be taking a Scion, Toyota, or Lexus product up to Pikes Peak this year. So that would be very, very exciting. Uh, to a Toyota see. Previa, man, that's what I heard. I think so. Yeah, that's the, the one, one I heard. The supercharged one that's really, really loud. With a 15 foot wing off the back of it. <laughs> He's going to do Decatora style. We're showing right now, this is the front straight and the back straight. We're showing you some times right now on the screen. This is the uh, fastest times in session. John Miller in street rear wheel drive running a 137, 328. Ramin Abdelbahabi running a 128, 685. Fastest time of this session. Oh, I'm sorry, not the fast time of this session because we have Daniel O'Donnell with a 126, 821 and Hartmut Vail in the Rentec C63 with a 133, 935. Not enough to keep up with his 130 that he ran yesterday. Whit Staples doing 135, 144. He was entered yesterday along with Cameron Worth, but did not run yesterday. Cameron Worth in a limited rear wheel drive and Whit Staples in street rear wheel drive coming out here today for the first time as we're showing John Miller from Arsenal Autosport. And you know, it's not just the vehicles, uh, you know, withstanding the temperatures, actually the drivers too. There's a lot of fatigue. I mean, if you guys ever been on a track day and with a helmet and suit and, and, and trying to mentally focus on there and also, you know, a lot of physical exertion and in this heat, it doesn't really help. So, you know, there's a lot of factors in there, a lot of mental factors too. When they're talking about driving, there's a lot of Mental bits. Are we going to talk about who I think you're about to talk about? <laughs> I saw you looking down there. Drivers are ballast with. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. Bukes, that's, what, that's what Mike Warfield tells me. He says Jeff Westfall's just ballast. He just, he just turns the wheel and points the pedals. I believe that's uh, John Miller in the Arsenal Auto yep. Sports. Oh, no, no, no. Hearing some bad news. Bad news right now. Brian Hedian in the uh, Wired Electronics Buddy Club S2000 sent me a text saying, I'm out. Pads are metal to metal. Going to go buy some. Tell the crowd. So he's actually going to a Napa Auto Parts or something. If there's an S2000 in the paddock and you want to loan um, <laughs> Brian Hedian some brake pads, that would be You'll great. You'll put a sticker on their car, but I don't know what kind of sticker you put on a disrepresentation. <laughs> you know? Brian Hedian making a long trek here from New Jersey all the way down to Palm Beach International. Mr. Jerseylicious himself coming all the way down from New Jersey. Huge, huge props to him. We're showing some of the scores right now. I believe we have 141 remaining in this uh, in this session, which ironically is Chris Rado's number. Chris Rado's second fastest time of the uh, second fastest time of the day with a 121, 119. Whit Staples, John Miller, all the time showing up there. If you're here on the paddock, make your way over to the Formula Drift stage, and you can see some of the uh, times of the cars running, and you can actually see uh, the camera work that our wonderful producers from Bell One Racing Communications are doing as well. If you're watching on live stream, thank you very much for tuning in and spending your Saturday with us. Whoa, and we are joined by the presence of greatness here. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to call him this, but Jason Deanhart says his name is Hot Pants. <laughs> but it's Brian Bridges from Bridges Racing turning the drift community on his ear, yeah. coming in with an Indonesian tire manufacturer, Achilles Tire and Daigo Saito. Brian, say hi to the Global Time Attack. Hey, guys. How's it going out there? Good, good. <laughs> Brian Bridges, we're going to try to get over to get an interview with you. He's trying to get some radio stuff going together. I want to see if I can grab him for a minute. Someone's knocking on the door uh, right B. now. Tony B. We got Tony B. Oh, Tony Brachioppa's yeah. coming up here. Everybody's. Wow, because Bell One Racing Communications handles the radios for all this, too. Yeah. So while we're showing you this, we've got mayhem going on in the timing yeah. and scoring <laughs> okay. tower. Tony B. Know, Tony B. is in the house. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can buy. Can I buy it now on eBay, Tony? You can buy whatever you want on eBay. Oh, look I at sure that. can. Tony Brachioppa. Just get the app. Just get the app. <laughs> Tony Brakoyapa coming out strong this year with a new car. His car sounds like it sucks up everything. Like every time he drives by, like the atmosphere changes. Tony B is like the <laughs> best looking man in Time Attack. He is a sexy beast, and so is Brian Bridges. Brian, best of luck with Daigo and Robbie and the crew. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Brian Bridges, we hope to see him out at a global he looks time so attack. He's busy. Like every time I see him, he's just like running around and he's well, got this look on his face. You want to see something like funny? I saw on, Mo on Moto IQ, I saw some pictures that they're running of the Team America F, yeah, the R32 that yeah. Eric Sue and Mike Kojima are building to take to the World Time Attack Challenge. And they're doing a late night tuning session, and I see Brian Bridges in the background of one of the pictures. He's actually chipping in and helping that team work on that car in his off time. Like running an entire FD team isn't enough for him. No, I don't think the guy sleeps either. So uh, he, he just lives <laughs> and not, breathes for not. cars. So Daryl David getting the radios straightened out. Daryl David does the radios for a lot of the Global Time Attack teams as well as the Formula Drift teams. We're going to see Formula Drift open the uh, big...
top 32 practice as we see Mark Richter making his way into the porta potty. I have a breaking porta potty <laughs> news alert. Mark Richter from Falcon Tire is in the porta potty, everyone. Please use the Purell, Mark Richter. We are about to start, yes, we are about yes. to start one, one last session for Global Time Attack here. We'll have session four going until 2 p.m. We will be back at 6 p.m. to 7.30. I won't be back because, you know what, quite frankly, I'm over Palm Beach International Raceway, <laughs> and I'm just, I got to get out of the humidity. Yuki Otai will be taking yes, over I'll be for there. me. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll taking over, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to be as entertaining or as informational as John, but I do have some experience, so hopefully I'll be able to help you guys out and get you guys lap times and, and as much information I can give you guys, you know. And we're showing you right now the paddock with Dai Yoshihara's beautiful face over there. Best hair, best style. 2011 Formula Drift champion. And here's some of the times we're yeah, showing. Go. We're going to have our next session. is going to be going up any moment now at um, actually not until 1.50. So not necessarily any moment now. But our next session is going to go 1.40. We are moving the times around. Well, we're going to show our next, mark, next session is going to go at 1.40. <laughs> we are moving it uh, to 1.40 actually. So... It looks like uh, that's going to be in about 20 minutes in our next session. I don't know if we could show some B-roll maybe or maybe some of the interviews we did yesterday. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we're going to interview the sexy beast himself, one of the two co-founders from Formula Drift. We're going to find out a little bit more about the love fest that is Global Time Attack and Formula Drift here at Palm Beach International Raceway.